Okay, music fans, uh, welcome back for another deep dive. And today we're going to get into some, uh, well, actually, some pretty practical music theory for all you guitarists out there. Yeah. I've got an excerpt here all about diminished sevenths chords. But specifically, we're going to be looking at this cool technique for actually, like, visualizing them on the fretboard. Yeah. Which I think is way more useful than just, like, you know, memorizing shapes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, visualization is key. For sure. Um, and this source we've got talks about something called the arrow shape. You ever uh, heard of this? Yeah, the arrow shape's a great visual. You know, you you can imagine the root note of your diminished seventh as like the tip of the arrow. And then the other notes of the chord kind of form that shaft shape. Okay, so before we get too deep into that, can you just uh, remind us what makes a diminished seventh chord unique in the first place? Yeah. So uh, a diminished seventh chord, um, let's take B diminished seventh, for example. It's made up of the notes B, D, F, and A flat. And what makes it special is that each of those notes is a minor third apart from each other. So it creates this sound that's kind of dissonant and really wants to resolve. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, like it needs to go somewhere. It's looking for something, yeah. Mm. So where does it usually land? Well, a common resolution for a B diminished seventh would be a C major chord. Um, and that move from the tension to resolution is really satisfying. Makes sense. So it's like almost like a, uh, a sigh of relief. Yeah, exactly. Now here's where things get a little mind-blowing for me. Uh, this excerpt mentions that these chords are symmetrical, meaning they can actually resolve to like a bunch of different chords, not just C major. Is that where this whole arrow shape thing comes in? Yeah, exactly. Because of that symmetry, you can shift that arrow shape up and down the fretboard and find other diminished seventh chords. And each one of those has a bunch of different resolutions you can go to. Whoa, okay, so like I could be jamming in one key and then boom, use a diminished chord to just jump to a totally different key. Exactly. It's like a musical teleportation device. No wonder they call them the chameleons <laughs> of harmony. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Once you learn the shape, you can spot them all over the fretboard. So I guess the takeaway here for everyone listening, visualizing that arrow shape can help you find these diminished seventh chords really quickly. And once you know where they are, you can use them to create all these cool transitions and modulations and stuff. Yeah, exactly. I would definitely encourage everyone to grab their guitar and experiment with that B diminished seventh. Try resolving it to different chords and see what kinds of sounds you get. Yeah. And, you know, something else to think about is, you know, we talked about that symmetrical nature of these chords. You know, could you use that to actually build motifs or create unique progressions? or even just modulate to a key that's like totally far out from where you started. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. The possibilities are kind of endless. Endless possibilities. That's what we like to hear. All right, thanks for joining us for another deep dive. We'll catch you all next time. See ya.